Hi, this is Rob with Precision Zone, and I'm going to be going over the removal and replacement of an ERFC 2048D Akuma encoder. Now, I have locked the machine out, and I verified there is no incoming power to the machine. You're going to need a number three, four, and five millimeter Allen T wrench to perform this job. Now, I have removed several of the access panels to make this easier for you to see. The first thing that we're going to need to do is take our number four millimeter and remove the four encoder cover bolts. Now before I finish taking this encoder cover off, I want to just make sure that all the dust and grime and dirt is off this mating surface so that when I pull the encoder cover, that stuff doesn't fall inside the motor. Okay, now that the encoder cover is removed, the next job is to disconnect the feedback cable. And how to do that is there are two tabs and you need to pull them apart and the connector will pop out and go ahead and remove it and place it to the side. After that, there are four mounting screws that take a number three millimeter. Go ahead and remove those. Now, now that the four mounting screws are out and the, the feedback connector is disconnected, you're gonna to wanna to take a five millimeter Allen and it's going to go down in the center of this shaft and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and loosen and this is on a jacking bolt so it's going to pop the encoder off. But before you wanna go ahead and pop it, make sure you have a positive grip on it. That way it doesn't fall and hit the ground. Okay, so now the encoder is removed. I wanna go ahead and make a couple points here. And that is this pin right here and this pin inside here. Now these two pins need to line up with the pin or the keyway right here and the hole right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take our new encoder and we're gonna get it in place with this pin being down in this hole. And we're gonna try to get this pin to go in this keyway and line it up as best as we can. But before we go trying to put it on, I wanna go ahead and take this feedback cable and where this notch is goes inside. Be careful to line it up and go ahead and push those locks back in place. So do your best to line it up. And then you'll notice a very big difference when it slides down. Now you take that five millimeter and tighten this screw. And make sure that that pin is in that hole. Now, as we're tightening this, don't overdo it because this encoder sits on a taper that's on the rotor shaft. Now that the center screw is tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and install the four mounting screws. Now these have lock washers on them, but a little blue Loctite goes a long way. Also on these screws, don't overdo it either because this is an aluminum housing and these little screws are easy to strip out. Okay, now that the mounting screws are down, you wanna go ahead and take the feedback connector cables and push them out of the way so that when you install your encoder cover, it does not pinch them. Also on this encoder cover, make sure that the gasket material is still there. If it has been broken or removed, you're gonna to need to have some sort of sealant to make sure that this uh, makes a positive seal. And before you go ahead and put on the encoder cover, just give one more look over to make sure that everything is clean and there's no excessive dirt inside here, that that could automatically be cause for sending your motor in for repair. So again, a little blue Loctite on the bolts. Place the encoder cover right there. Okay, well that was it. Pretty easy, right? Well, if you have any questions about how to do this, please reach us at precisionzone.com. 
and thank you for watching.